Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of whatever has meaning for you. I'm a 72-year-old ape. For our species, averaging its individual longevity over the quarter million years of our species' existence, that's extraordinarily old. There's no question that it's also artificially old, since advanced medical techniques have rescued me several times from accidents and illnesses that should have killed me. I cut and bruise much more easily now than I used to and heal more slowly. Those vigorous 10-mile walks that I was still taking daily as recently as five years ago have steadily moved toward and finally over the horizon of the reasonable and attainable. I could go on, but I wouldn't want you to think that I'm lamenting it. I understand what all flesh is heir to and always have. The artificially old don't necessarily reckon themselves fortunate for having cheated death for so long, for that extension of years comes at the cost of cellular senescence, which is, after all, the lot of all mammals and of much other animal life as well, provided that animal escapes death by other means for a long enough time. Immortality is pretty much beyond the reach of anything more complex than a hydra whose luck holds. The artificially old may, however, see themselves as fortunate in one respect at least, for with advancing age comes increasing clarity, at least to those who are open to and actively pursue it. I am among those who count themselves fortunate in that regard. That clarity is so precious that I could easily take it to be a fair trade-off for the cellular senescence one suffers on the way to attaining it. With advancing age also comes a kind of time foreshortening, for each additional year of life becomes a progressively smaller percentage of the whole. The effect, as one reviews one's life in hopes of understanding it better, can be almost vertiginous, there's so much there crammed into such a tiny moment of time. When not much time lies ahead, the past increasingly commands one's attention rather than the future, of which there is little for one personally. It's obvious to me that I stand somewhere near the end of my life, and that awareness is the reason for a certain turn that I'm sure my efforts here are going to take for the extended future, however long that extension turns out to be. I feel the need at this stage of my life to dig deep, to go for depth rather than breadth. Rather than spending my remaining time with the latest published thing, I find myself rereading, for instance, those novels that have given me pleasure in the past and trying now to penetrate to underlying meaning that might have escaped me earlier. I do the same with poetry and histories I've read and, of course, find myself doing the very same with music. I no longer feel much of an impulse to discover the unfamiliar. I want rather to understand more deeply the already somewhat familiar. In that respect, I'm very different from other artistically involved people I know. I have creative friends whose art is as novel and vivid as ever at ages in calendar years even greater than my own. But the difference, of course, is that they are creative artists while I am not and never was. My artistry has always lain in the understanding and expressing of some other composer's intentions in my playing or conducting. I've even gotten that right a few times, I think. It's a matter of some irony that I earned a master's degree in composition since I clearly am no composer. That coursework was not lost on me, however, nor was the experience of composing. It equipped me rather thoroughly for understanding the music of others, and for that reason, that degree was the most valuable of the four that I earned, all of them in music. So I guess that makes me an interpretive artist rather than a creative one, and I've long since made my peace with that. That's why I launched this YouTube channel in the first place, or at least mostly so. Most of my videos have been about music, although I have from time to time taken jabs at creationists, probably owing to some residual anger over having had my mind fucked as a child by such nonsense insisted on by the ignorant authority figures in my life. 
My videos have never featured music composed by me, only remarks aimed at clarifying certain features, mostly structural, of already familiar music composed by others for those who might be interested in learning to listen that way. This all hit me with great force during the last couple of weeks. At long last, I'd finished what I set out to do years ago, a YouTube coverage of major works in the symphonic tradition from the time of Haydn through the Eleven Symphonies of Gustav Mahler. I think I understood, as I was putting the finishing touches on my video covering the latter's unfinished tenth, that my work here was about to take a different turn, and you saw that new direction demonstrated by my renewed examination of a splendid octet for strings by the 16-year-old Felix Mendelssohn, giving it far more thorough and granular coverage than I did on my first clumsy pass through it about six years ago. I posted that yesterday, and I'm going to continue in that vein. For some of you, this will be repetition in a sense. For others who look closely at my analysis, there will be a lot more substance here than before. And I will, of course, have feasted on that substance while preparing it for your enjoyment. That's all I wanted to say with this. My offerings in the coming weeks, months, years, however long I have to devote to this labor of love, will be of that sort. It would be good to have you along for what already looks to this old ape to be a scenic journey of great promise. <laughs>